Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and I write the reloading column for Combat Handguns magazine. Now, right now, a lot of people would say that we're living in the age of the auto pistol. And I would tend to agree, uh, particularly since 1980, or certainly since 1990, auto pistols have become ubiquitous with police, with self-defense. But for most of the 20th century, we were in the age of double-action revolvers. And the classic mid-century revolvers are still outstanding guns. And they're fun to shoot, and they're great for self-defense, even now. So in this video, we're going to shoot two classic revolvers. We're going to shoot the Colt Trooper 357 Magnum. And this is a gun that is very much like the, uh, the Python in terms of lock work. Uh, just a little bit different in exterior appearance. And we're going to shoot one of the all-time classic Smith & Wessons, the Model 13. Now, both of these guns are 357 Magnum revolvers. And the Model 13 is a lot like the old Model 10 Military and Police, except it's beefed up for 357 uh, Magnum. This is a fixed sight gun. The Colt is a uh, adjustable sight gun, but they are both very good combat handguns. And we'll show you what they can do. The Colt Trooper 357 uh, was introduced in 1961, and it was essentially a down market version of the Python. Uh, where the Python had a fully lug shrouded uh, barrel uh, and it had a wide spurred target hammer and high gloss bluing. The, uh, the Trooper 357 had a more utilitarian bluing. It didn't have the target spur on the hammer and it did not have a lug barrel. Uh, as you can see, the ejector rod is just kind of hanging out there. Now, when I was younger, I really thought those fully lugged and shrouded barrels were the way to go. And, and the Trooper 357 uh, Magnum just looked very retro to me, old-fashioned. But as I've gotten older, I've really come to appreciate it. And this has become one of my favorite double-action six guns. Now, both the, uh, the Colt Trooper 357 Magnum here and the Smith & Wesson Model 13 that we'll be looking at in a few minutes uh, operate very much the same. They're both double action uh, six guns. They can operate in double action mode with a pull of the trigger or you can cock the hammer and have very light single action firing. So in that regard they're the same. They have some subtle differences that you really should know about so you understand what's going to happen when you pull the trigger. Uh, in order to open the uh, cylinder on the Colt, you pull back on the latch, whereas with the Smith & Wesson, you push forward. Colts rotate clockwise, where Smith & Wessons rotate counterclockwise. And if you don't know that, and say you only want to fire one uh, round, you could really surprise yourself. So th those are essential differences. The lock work is kind of different. The Colt is much smoother right out of the box than the Smith & Wesson. Uh, this is one of the all-time great actions and it makes this gun just a joy to shoot. Both this Colt and the uh, Smith & Wesson we'll look at in a little while are chambered in 357 Magnum, which means it'll shoot both uh, the high-powered 357 Magnums for self-defense or the low-cost 38 Specials for practice. Uh, it's what made this such a versatile revolver uh, in the mid-century when these things were dominant. So let's, let's take it out to the range and see what it'll do, and then later we'll do the same thing with the Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson introduced the Model 13 in 1973, and uh, basically it was a 357 Magnum upgrade to the Model 10 Military and Police, uh, which was a classic six-gun for Smith & Wesson. Uh, this Model 13 has a four-inch barrel. It has a lugged under rib but no shroud, and of course it's a fixed sight gun in, uh, in keeping with the military and police tradition. As we said before, there are some differences between the, uh, the Colt and the Smith & Wesson. On the Smith & Wesson, the, uh, the thumb latch to release the cylinder presses forward, not back, as on the Colt. And actually, it's somewhat more natural feeling to use. Uh, the cylinder revolves counterclockwise as opposed to clockwise. And basically, it seems like every other revolver 
revolves clockwise. So getting used to Smith and Wessons, if you shoot lots of other revolvers, can uh, can be a problem because if you just want to fire one, or if, if you want to check your loads, it's going the other way uh, from the way it would go in a Colt. But uh, it's an incredibly solid gun. Uh, they're a little bit rough as they come out of the box. The actions can be a little bit gritty compared to the Colt. But I had this one reworked by a local gunsmith. Uh, the trigger is phenomenal. Single action pull is three pounds. Double action pull is very smooth and it shoots every bit as good as, uh, as the Colt. Today we're shooting on the Evil Roy target system. Uh, this is a great system, it takes interchangeable heads, it's portable. Uh, I shoot at two clubs, one has really good action shooting facilities and I, I usually use their steel targets and the other one's much better for target shooting. And uh, when I want to shoot steel over here, I just transport out some of my Evil Roy targets and set them up and you can paint them any color you want. Uh, I painted these white because I was using black on black sights today. And rather than using paper, I can see exactly where I'm hitting. All I need to do is give it a fresh coat of paint and I can see where the new shots are hitting. So I'm pretty pleased with this. Uh, it's from Action Target. And it's a great system and uh, let's make it ring a little bit. After shooting our two classic double action revolvers, they, uh, they're both outstanding handguns. And if I had to choose between them, it would be difficult. The Colt certainly was smoother out of the box. The Smith & Wesson, though, was every bit as smooth now. But I guess if I had to pick one to give the nod to, it would be the Colt. The action is long and silky. It's very accurate. Even though fixed sights, I think, are great for combat, uh, the target sights on this Colt are quite rugged, and they really hold their zero and very easy to, to see on target. So I guess my heart goes to the Colt, even though uh, I really like the Smith & Wesson as well.